So welcome to this very special webinar today, co-sponsored by X-Rite and Perfectly Clear by Athentech. We are so very happy to host our good friend Janice Wendt as our presenter today. Janice Wendt is one of the photographic industry's most respected retouch and image enhancement artists. She's well known as trainer to the trainers and has more than 30 years in nature, commercial wedding, and portrait photography experience. Janice brings traditional techniques she learned, as we, many of us did, through years of working with sensitized products, now brings all that knowledge into digital imaging, creating that ever-elusive wow image factor. She works very closely with several companies in an educational capacity, including Athentech Imaging, x Rite, Ilford, and Wacom. She's well known for her extensive knowledge and creative techniques using Perfectly Clear, Nick Collection, as well as other Photoshop and Lightroom plugins. And Janice, uh, welcome again. We're just going to switch uh, presenters here so that we can see your screen. And you can take it away. Okay. Janice went. Well, I cannot uh, see how I can. Uh... Oh, there we go. get that down okay and I'll be in the background here answering questions about x right for you folks so any technical questions that you have just type those in type in your questions uh, for Janice and uh, we will uh, have her answer some of your questions directly at the end of the webinar all right Janice thank you very much go ahead thank you Brenda now I now as a photographer I go out and I do a lot of shooting and lots of times I do a ton of images and while I love looking at my images sometimes I hate processing them I want to make sure the colors are correct so I always calibrate my computer monitor my printer and now I also calibrate my camera I calibrate my camera using the x right color checker passport and the why it's called a passport. It's about the size of a passport, so it just fits right smoothly into your backpack or your camera bag. So you can take it with you everywhere. Down in the below here, you can see that I have the passport, and I'm just going to bring that up. I have a photograph of it, and in order to use this shot that I did of the passport, I uh, will shoot it with each camera I have. That way, when I have uh, one camera that uh, has a different color than another, just like different films, your cameras have different colors. And so I can get all my colors to look the same. And that's important as a first step in my raw development before I go then into perfectly clear. So I want to make sure that this works out really well for me. So I take a picture with every camera and I create a DNG. Now how do I create a DNG in Lightroom? I'll go into export okay, and I'll come to here where it says export to hard drive or we can export it to the desktop or anywhere you want to go and we don't want to go to any other pro product and then I can come down and I can tell it that I want to make a DNG. Okay? So I'm going to make a DNG, and I can just then click export. Okay. Now, how would we do this in Photoshop? So I'm going to just shrink that down, and I'm just going to go to Bridge, and in Bridge, let's just bring that up nice and large. Okay. I can do the same thing. I can come in here, and I can export it out to a DNG. So. I already have a DNG here, okay? And I'm just going to take the DNG and I'll just drag it up into the Color Checker Passport software. With that, it's going to find the squares in the image that it cal uses to calibrate with. So as soon as it's done loading the image, now this is a Nikon D800 image, so it's kind of big, so it'll take it takes a little bit longer. And so what it does is it has these known values that these particular squares are going to be. So 
Oh, I don't know why it's taking so long. There we go. And so you can see those squares there. It's figured it out. And then I can just click Create Profile. Okay. I want to cancel because I've already created the profile on them, so I'm going to go ahead and quit that. But that's how easy it is. It will automatically take my that image, create the profile, and it'll place it both in Photoshop and in Lightroom in the correct place automatically. So you don't even have to do anything else. So it's so easy. And when you get another camera, just shoot another picture of the color checker passport and you're good to go. So I'm going to go back here and I'm going to show how we use this in a uh, raw process. So I'm going to go to my test catalog here and my images and say so I want to open an image in here so I'll just go right to this image of the lady sewing in the shop Okay. She was so fun. She's sitting there and you can see she's uh, waxing her thread so it'll go s s make sewing a little easier. Whenever I make a raw conversion for my, um, uh, so when I'm working with Perfectly Clear and I'm doing a, uh, a raw conversion, I make sure that I have everything zeroed out because my exposure is good here. If I let this do auto here, lots of times the auto will mess up my, so I'll always make sure that I have everything zeroed out so that it doesn't mess up my histogram. I want to keep that good. The other thing I'll do is I'll turn my sharpening off and notice it says preview only, so I already have that as a default. To use my profile, Go right here where the camera tab is, come down up to Nikon D800, it'll be listed right there. And now it's applied the camera profile, so now the image has got correct color for that camera. So it's corrected those little errors, those little differences that each camera has, because each camera is like a different kind of film. Uh, when I shot Ektachrome or Kodachrome or any of those things, each one had its own characteristic. Cameras will have that tendency as well. Now, if you haven't shot film, just know that if you probably had more than one camera, you notice that the color looks different between each one. And this is how you get all the colors to look the same, and so it'll look really great. Then the other thing I'll do before I go forward is that I'll enable the lens profile corrections, and I will get rid of chromatic aberrations. This will make sure that when I'm opening my file and going forward from here into Perfectly Clear, I have as much information going forward as possible. I try to achieve a gap left and a gap right on my histogram here. If I shot my colors off on the image to a certain degree, like if I've shot it under tungsten light and I had it under a daylight setting, I might change the settings here to daylight, cloudy, shade, tungsten, fluorescent flash, or whatever. So on this, though, I did do a correction on while I was there. So I don't need to do a new white balance here. The little differences that it may have, I can get rid of while I'm working in Perfectly Clear. So we're going to go ahead and open the image. So when I open the image, I can, it's going to open up with camera raw there into, and I have it opening as a 16-bit RGB file pro photo color space. Come up to filter, go to Athentech image, and go to perfectly clear. Now perfectly clear is going to do 12 corrections in one click. It's going to look at the image and do all these different corrections. Now I can turn some of the corrections on or off. So right now it says here that noise has been detected. So if noise has been detected in the image, I might want to turn my noise reduction on. I want to keep all the good details, so I am going to refine that detail in there. We can zoom in and see 
how the noise reduction is working. So if we turn this down or up, we can see how the different detail is happening within the image. If you find the image getting too soft, just turn down that. We can also turn the strength down or up depending upon how much noise we want to remove. In the drop down where it says select automatic noise removal, I can select portrait, night scene, camera phone, or strongest. I'll stick with default here. We also have a white balance. Now the white balance is a little aggressive on this, so I'll just turn that down because I like the warm look a little bit better. Okay. And then my exposure. Let's zoom back. Look at the exposure on the entire image. Do I want to bring in the background or do I not want to bring in the background? If I turn this down, that background gets a little darker. If I turn it on, it gets a little lighter. But I can also change the auto correction, turn the slider down, and I can get just the right balance between the two. Contrast a little bit strong here, so I'll just turn that down. And below this, we have vibrancy. Vibrancy allows me to create depth within the image. So I have the vibrancy turned on, and I'm going to turn it up. And look at how we have now a more three-dimensional look in the image. And these are some of the things that's really difficult to get when we're working in standard camera raw. I'm going to turn on fidelity. It's going to correct the purples. So we can see here, look at how the purple here in the corrected looks so much better than here. There's quite a few different adjustments, and this is a patented process on getting that purple just right. So let's go back to the full image there. We'll just go ahead and zoom a little bit. Down below, vibrancy and, and fidelity, we have sharpening. Now, if I had done even a higher speed, I might want to turn the sharpening off. Because sharpening is going to exaggerate the noise. So let's turn it off and see a comparison side by side. Go ahead and zoom in. Okay. And we can see that this is a lot sharper image than here, even with the sharpening turned off. If I turn the sharpening on, it becomes even sharper. So we can see all that great detail in the image. Below this, where we already did the noise, we have skin tone. Okay? With skin tone, it can take the excessive red. Because what happens is, is our cameras will see a little more of the infrared and record it on the image. We don't see infrared personally, so we don't see the ruddiness in someone's skin. She doesn't have that ruddy of a skin, but if we turn on the skin tone, we can see it tones some of this redness down a little bit. I don't think I need to turn that on. It also has auto red eye. I don't need that. And then I can click OK. So it does all those corrections. Now, if I have a whole series of images of this woman, I can save those particular settings. So we'll go into that and apply it individually to each image. So here is before and after. Look at how much sharper and cleaner that image is without me having to jump through a lot of hoops. So let's look at Lightroom on the same tools. So we'll go in here to Lightroom. Okay. And in Lightroom I'm going to come to my library here. And I'll look at a different image. Let's go into this image that has this wonderful picture. This is the floating city in Cambodia. And in here I again want to use a zeroing out. But with this white here, we might have underexposed underneath here. So we might want to make some adjustments in Lightroom. So let's go to the develop mode right in here, the develop module. And in the develop module, I have these automatically zeroed out, but I might want to do some adjustment in here to help bring this clipping out. 
So we want to make sure we're not clipping when we're doing our raw. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to lighten up the shadows. And look at how we eliminated that clipping right away. And that looks great. So now we have all that detail coming in there. Now how do we apply the camera profile when we're working in Lightroom? So right here in detail, I want to make sure my sharpening's off. I always want to sharpen later. And then down we have our lens correction. So we want to enable the lens correction and then remove the chromatic aberrations. And then we're going to come down and we have camera calibration. Camera calibration is going to be the last module within the right hand side of Lightroom. And right here where it says profile, that's where we're going to select the profile. And we're going to select that and you can see a slight color shift. So what it's doing is it's fixing how that camera interprets the color. To go forward on this image, I can go ahead and go under photo, edit in, and we're going to edit in perfectly clear. So in perfectly clear, I can pop this out. We're going to edit with a copy. Now notice it says a copy. That's why it's protecting my original. Click edit. And when it's edit, it's not editing my original. It's copying the original. So my original is always preserved. So we've got a non-destructive workflow here. So it's going to come in and it's going to open up the image. And when it opens up the image in perfectly clear, it's going to come in at the default settings. So you can be surprised how good perfectly clear does the initial edit. Look at how nice that default is. If we looked at that our before and after, we have a really nice correction already. We see how all those in those colors. And if we go underneath here, we have a little more detail down there. So I'm going to do a little tint correction. It doesn't have any tint really to speak of. And then I'll do my exposure. And I don't want to go too much. And I'm going to up the vibrancy. And in the fidelity, I want to pop the colors a little bit. So I'm going to click on Vivid. So now we can see here's before and there's after. Look at how nice the skies become and how the colors have come popping right up very nicely. I'm going to turn the sharpening off and it says no noise has been detected. So we do not need to apply noise reduction. So it really tells you right here whether we need to or don't need to. Now if I want to do this to a series of images, I can click here under new and I'm going to call this Cambodia preset. Okay. So that's going to be my Cambodia preset. Now I've saved this because I want to do several different images at one time. So I'm just going to hit go ahead and hit save. Now how do we apply this preset to really make our workflow work faster? And that's what's going to really make this uh, raw workflow a lot more efficient. So in here, let's go to my library. I'm going to select all of these. And I'm going to select the images that I want to adjust. So in here, I'm going to select these. And I'm just going to hit Command. And I'm going to select that one. Go ahead and select this one, this one here, this one, this one, this one, and this one. Now, there's quite a variety here. This I shot through a window, so it really looks flat. This is on a foggy day. This is really dark. This one's got both really light and very dark. And how do we get all of those to work? the way we want them to work. So I'm going to just click develop here. Okay. It's going to bring up my first image. Okay. And I want to make sure that I don't have any clipping. So let's go all the way up here. Okay. 
and I'm just going to make sure that my highlights are not clipping so we have a little bit of clipping in there not too much so I'm going to take the highlights down just a little bit okay, until I have no clipping I'm going to also open up the shadows and lighten up the blacks just a little bit okay. Then when I come down to detail, make sure my sharpening's turned off. And then I'm going to tell it to remove chromatic aberration and enable lens profile. And then come under here and apply the camera profile. Now I want to, I have several of these images all selected, so I'm going to synchronize those. Okay. I'm going to synchronize them and it's going to include the calibration and the camera calibration all together. So now I've done all of those. Now the next thing I want to do is now to apply perfectly clear to all of those images that I've adjusted. Okay? So I'm going to click library and I'm going to go to export. When I go to export I can tell it to export to perfectly clear right there on top there perfectly clear it can use the system presets or I can use my user preset and I have my Cambodia preset that I just made so now I can apply that preset that preference that I just created to all of these images now right here it's very important if I want to make slightly different adjustments to each one, I can tell it to not hide the perfectly clear window. If I tell it to hide the perfectly clear window, it's going to apply it and then go on to the next image. If I tell leave this turned off so it's not checked, so that's be checked and this is unchecked, then it's going to allow me to do a little subtle tweaking between each one. So I want to show you how easy it is to do a little subtle tweaking between each image. We're going to save it, save it in the same folder as the original. And then we're going to add it to the catalog. It's important that we want to add it to the catalog. And I'm not going to add it to the stack. I just want to add it to the catalog. If I stack it, then, then we might not be able to see it. You aren't going to see it until you click on and you unstack it. So I want to add it to the catalog to save. So, and we want to choose a new name. So we don't want to overwrite without warning. We want to make sure that we choose a new name. And our renaming, we can tell it what to do. So I'm going to just tell it to do an edit. Okay. So we're going to come in and I'm going to add this to say PC. So it says that I have applied perfectly clear to the image. So we've got that. And I'm going to click done here. Now I can click export and it will now come in. It's going to make a copy. I have my defaults is making it as a TIFF and then it's going to open up the perfectly clear window as it's coming through it. So it's going to open each one of these and do that as a separate item. Okay. Let's just come in. So it's going to uh, take a little bit. So let's uh, just go ahead and cancel this. Okay. Canceling task. So I'm just going to, oops. <laughs> That's what. So I'm going to just select this one and this image. Okay. And we're going to go ahead and export. Okay, and just click, and it'll come up with everything that I just did. So I'm going to just click export, and it'll come up now. So it's going to only going to process two images because we didn't want all those images to be processed. That would have taken too long, especially with uh, uh, as much as uh, as big as these files are. So it's made the two files, and now it's going to allow me to do my individual edits. 
So you see this little right down here, it bounces up, so now it says that that's ready to look at. Now notice that the tint correction for this was a little bit strong because of all the green. So I can just turn that down, and that got as a nice correction. I might want to do a high exposure correction in, not vivid, but standard. Turn the contrast down, and that looks great. A little sharpening in there, that'd be good. And then we can go to the next image. Just click the next image right here, and it goes right on to my next image. So I'm just going to turn the exposure off, because I really don't need to make that any lighter. I can change that correction in there. And I'm going to bring up my vibrancy just a little bit. And we'll just go ahead and do vivid in here. That gives it a little more color. And now I'm done, I can click Save All. So now that what that's done is I can just click through those really fast. So it really allows me to do a preset. So what I tend to do now is that I'll take everything that's on the dark side, do those as a batch with a preset and then do a batch of everything that's light, and then do a batch of everything that's normal. So if I have these two images that are fairly alike, okay, I can come in here, and you can see that the histogram is pretty much the same. But one of the things I want to point out is that, see the sky here? The sky is so hot clipped that there isn't much of anything that we can do to bring it back. I can certainly make my highlights darker, but then we get false information in here. So we can create artifacts by coming in and putting false information, and it'll, it'll create uh, a bad image. So, so if you've got something that that severely clip that this was, Okay, so we'll just go back here to the general presets, and we'll just hit zeroed. If it's that badly clipped that this is all wiped out, then that isn't going to, to give you a good image. So that's something that I would then say, okay, I would not use that in that group because it's just not going to give me a good image. It's something I might want to look back and see if I want to get something else. Now this image here is the one I shot through the car window. And it's sometimes really hard to get that nice vibrance and everything out of that image whenever we shoot through car windows. So I want to go ahead and come in here and show you how well, perfectly clear, we'll fix this particular image. I'm going to go in and go photo, edit in. You can also do a right mouse click, perfectly clear. Edit a copy. Notice the other two are grayed out. Now if I have a TIFF or a JPEG, it'll give me two other corrections of possibilities. It'll say edit original, or it'll say edit um, with Lightroom presets or with just edit. And that will not apply any adjustments to the image. So it'll come up now with perfectly clear. I have a, a really lightweight computer because it's just a MacBook Air. So in here, look at how much of a correction this did with my Cambodia preset as my default. And you can see that while that other image was, wasn't as washed out, it, this did a fantastic job compared, and I, all I have to do now is click Save. I don't have to do any other corrections because it found the correct setting, and it does it not only image by image analyzation, but also does it by pixel by pixel. So if we have similar images, like we had the, the young man in the boat fishing, 
and now the girl here. Oh, we got an error here. I don't know why. Let's go to Photoshop. And let's do that same image. Okay. In here using a smart object workflow. Okay. So if you don't use a smart object workflow, I would highly recommend that you start working in that kind of a workflow. What a smart object workflow allows me to do is come back into my raw and make corrections again. So I'll just come in here and I'm going to double click on this. So we're going to open up in raw. It has everything zeroed out. We have a gap left, gap right. We're going to apply the camera profile. Now you can also set this up so that you can apply the profile by camera serial number. We're going to go ahead and remove the chromatic aberrations and we're going to give it an automatic lens correction. Now right here it says open image so I know that it is not going to open it up as a smart object. So if we want to open it as a smart object we just click here and tell it to open as a smart object. And I'm just going to put it straight RGB here. Click OK. And now it says open object. So when I set open object it will now make this image a smart object. Now what does a smart object do is it allows me to go back and make corrections at any time even after I save the filter. So I'm going to go ahead and close that image there. Don't save. There we go. And you'll see that it's got a little square and square and it refers back in this smart object to my original raw file. And go to filter. Perfectly clear. Okay. And since I'm working in Photoshop, it'll come into the custom setting. So we want to go to Cambodia preset. There we go. So this comes to the Cambodia preset there. And we can see the corrections and I can click OK. Now if I wanted this image to be slightly different from this or maybe I wanted to add a little more detail back in here, I might want to go in into my RAW and readjust it. So just double click it. Or if you forgot to apply your camera profile or you forgot to turn off sharpening or any of those things, you can go back into your RAW. So you'll see that it is at the RAW stage without any filter applied to it. So if I want to open up my shadows, I want to make my blacks lighter, say I want to add a little bit of clarity to it, I can click OK. Now when I click OK here, it's going to reapply that those new settings and then it's going to look at perfectly clear and reapply the filter at the settings that I had before. So now right now it's going to apply perfectly clear because it's working as a smart filter and you'll notice now those items got lighter. So here's before and here's after. Before and after. So you can see how we did all those corrections with one click and that just saved me a ton of time in my processing because I've got all these corrections so now I can come in and do all the other little adjustments I'd like to do. Okay, So let's see here. I'm going to go ahead and click on the perfectly clear file filter. So if I want to make any adjustment within perfectly clear I can do that as well. So for instance I want to bring this up back here a little more I can click hide in the auto correction okay. and I, I can turn my vibrancy down a little bit and turn my contrast down and turn that back up and now we can see more of the cars that are in here behind her. So we can change these items within the filter. We can make it standard or vivid. I can correct her skin tone and see it brought that redness down on her skin. Click OK. And now it's going to reapply the filter with my new settings. Now you can do this next week, next month, 
uh, an hour from now, whatever timing you want, because when you save this image as a TIFF or a PSD, it allows this smart object capability to always go back and be able to re-edit the RAW and also to be able to re-edit the filter. So you always have that capability. So for instance here, I see my highlights are a little too light. So I can come in. I can just bring my exposure down. I can bring my highlights down. Bring my whites down. Click OK. Now it's going to readjust that. So you can see how much you can do and making that really simple with your raw adjustments because you can always go back and change it when you go in and use smart objects. So that's uh, one of those great things. Plus, I know that I my color is good in my screen and in my image because I've also calibrated my computer screen. Now it's always important to do your computer screen and calibrate it. I use the Color Monkey Photo. The Color Monkey Photo can calibrate your screen, it can calibrate your projector, it can calibrate your printer. So it has that complete workflow. So we've sewn this all up so we have a complete circle. We've com calibrated the camera with the color checker passport. We've calibrated the monitor and we've calibrated the printer with the color monkey photo then we've also done corrections with our contrast our noise our color our vividness as far as purples and all those other parts of it and the skin tone all of those things have been corrected with perfectly clear so let's look at our before and our after look at how great that is and that's shooting through a car window let's just go ahead and close that I'm not going to save it don't save so let's go to into another image here let's go to something that's very dark and shadowy here and see how perfectly clear can help me out here so we have clipping in the shadows so here's where I would automatically bring that in because if I don't bring any information from the raw over to perfectly clear I'm not going to be able to bring it up later so it's always important that if you have clipping in your raw to go ahead and adjust that a little bit in here I don't have to worry about here I'm going to just go ahead and bring my contrast up a little bit to make that histogram look a little better and I'm going to go ahead and open it as a smart as a smart object. So it says open object. I'm going to open that up. Probably should have changed this. Let's go ahead and change that image to an 8-bit. That way it won't take so long to process on my my lightweight computer. So uh, I was bringing it in as a 16-bit instead of an 8-bit. So I'm going to size that down so it's not going to take so long to process it. But I usually start with my image as large as possible and it's a 16-bit. I'll start it as a pro photo color space instead of RG, just standard RGB because you want to work with a large space and gradually work down to a smaller space. And we'll go ahead and go into filter, Athen Tech Imaging, perfectly clear. Now we also have perfectly clear available for the Android, your smartphone Android, and for this the uh, the Apple iOS smartphone and tablets. So all Android tablets, all iOS tablets, uh, Apple will also work. So now we have in here we have our custom setting. So I'm going to go to my Cambodia preset. And in this, because this image has this predominantly dark area, I don't want to do the same corrections I did before. So we'll just come in here to high, and that'll open this up. I'm going to keep that a little bit warmer because that was sunrise. Turn the contrast down because I don't want it to be so contrasted. Vivid is a little more than I want there. Okay. And we can change the fidelity to give it some depth in there. 
And I'm going to bring the sharpening up just a little bit. Hmm. Oh, better turn it on. There we go. Now let's look at our before and after. And look at how it's bringing out this idol right here, giving that nice rich black shadow in, in that shadow. Look at the details and the color of the sky. It brought that up perfectly. And the grass had that nice spring green kind of a look. This is not a correct color. It brought that in with fidelity. And then I can click OK. And it's going to bring that right in. There we go. See how much faster that is when I'm in 8-bit. Then I'll just go ahead and reopen my original because I think I want this a little bit lighter in the shadow. So we'll just open that up a little bit more. There we go. Pull up the blacks just a touch more. Add a little bit of clarity to it. Now clarity is only doing midtones, so it's only doing these midtones in here. It's not doing the highlights or shadows. And then click OK. And it's going to reprocess that. So we can do a lot of really serious corrections and have it do all of this automatically for us. So now it's going to reprocess the image in perfectly clear. And look at how much more information we have in here by making those adjustments to RAW and then the perfectly clear filter reanalyzed the image and did a perfect readjustment. So I don't have to change that up at all. We don't have anything clipped. We can look at our histogram because perfectly clear will not clip. So here's our histogram. Look at our histogram. It looks great. Let's go ahead and close that. So that we have, we have that nice broad range of our exposure. We have a better looking histogram and we don't have any clipping on the image. Perfectly Clear will prevent clipping. It analyzes the image automatically. It will make those 12 corrections for me. Okay. And don't save. So that's how you work within Perfectly Clear. And within, let's uh, oh, cancel. I didn't mean to do that. I'm going to close Photoshop and come back to Lightroom. So in Lightroom, you can do your batch processes. You can do a batch process in Photoshop as well, but it, was, it would take longer than what I have timing-wise. So I'm not going to go into that. But I just wanted to show you how to use the camera profile with the Color Checker Passport and how to use perfectly clear. So Brenda, we can do some answer some questions if you'd like. Great, we have a lot of questions so I'm just going to start down my list and then we'll go back to the list of questions on the screen. Okay. Uh, the first question here is will perfectly clear plugins work with Lightroom 5 beta? Well it's a beta so I, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it's one of those things that uh, uh, we, we guarantee our stuff to work on, on published software, but betas, I cannot uh, guarantee that it does. Yeah, I knew that would be the answer. Beta, so. <laughs> it may work today, yep, and when right. they do an update on the beta, it might not work tomorrow. That's right, that's right, or vice versa. Yeah, so it's hard yeah. to know. Yeah, beta's yeah, beta. So it's hard to know. Mm -hmm. All right, so working space, what do you recommend, sRGB or uh, Adobe RGB? Um, Adobe RGB, and if you have the bandwidth on your computer, ProPhoto. Right, okay. And uh, in-camera lens correction versus Photoshop or Lightroom lens corrections. If you use the in-camera lens correction and then you do use the Photoshop or Lightroom lens correction, is there a possibility of overcorrecting it or is the software smart enough to know that it doesn't need as much? There is a possibility of overcorrecting uh -huh. it, uh, especially if you use a, a third-party uh, software and you correct it and then you apply another correction and you can get things looking a little odd because there isn't a, a sensing capability there to know. It's, it's looking at the metadata of your file and doing a correction from whatever your zoom distance is on that lens correction. 
Right. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I hear what you're saying. Now, we've got several questions here, uh, and maybe this is just a clarifying, uh, and I think, I think I know the answer, so I'll take a stab at it, and you can take it from here. Folks are saying, you know, if I have Photoshop or I have Lightroom and I can do corrections in Photoshop or Lightroom, why do I need to do them in Perfectly Clear? And I think, I think the answer uh, is that Perfectly Clear is going to do a lot of different corrections all at once and just save me a ton of time. But you tell me, is that right? Well, yes. And the other thing is, is that if if I'm coming into an image, okay, I can do things in here as a batch process, but it's doing it to the whole image and all the pixels the same. So I'm I if I'm making my highlights darker, I'm doing all my highlights darker. So anything that is deemed a highlight is made darker. Okay. If I want my shadows brighter, I'm doing all my shadows brighter, and I'm bringing all my blacks up. Okay. Now with Perfectly Clear, if I come into Perfectly Clear and come into Photo Edit in Perfectly Clear, okay, what it's going to do is it's going to analyze the image pixel by pixel. Okay. And it's also going to analyze each image individually. So. If you've ever used autocorrect in Photoshop or Lightroom, you know that autocorrect rarely gives you what you want. So this is like an intelligent autocorrect. It, it does much more. It's a patented process, so it isn't doing something that Lightroom or Photoshop does. What it is doing is it's looking four areas within the image that we want to make those corrections and it's doing it pixel by pixel instead of a blanket <coughs> so in here let's go here and do my default settings okay in the default setting it's starting to show my vault in here okay so I can see that vault where there used to be wood here and it's taking that out and there's some mesh up in there I can go into my exposure and say hi and I can bring this light even lighter in here but it's not going to lighten this at all and it's not going to lighten the midtones it's lighten that portion in there separately with the contrast it's also looking at how that contrast is interacting with an image as well vibrancy adds my depth to it okay and it's working much differently and it has fidelity now if I cancel out on this and say I go to especially this image with the lady with the purple if you've ever tried to correct purple on an image you know how hard it is so in here if I try to correct purple within Photoshop it's or Lightroom almost never can I get both the purple and the green and the blue and all the other colors to work. I usually have to compromise one to get the other. With this program, Perfectly Clear, it's analyzing pixel by pixel, so it finds the purple. So let's go to the photo, edit it in. Perfectly Clear. Edit. And it's going to look at the photo, and it's going to look at we have different values of purple in this particular image so it's looking at that now when I did the correction for the face it only looked for the facial recognition of the face and correcting it so these are things that just aren't in Photoshop or Lightroom uh, for those corrections okay so come that's up. a great that's a great explanation now uh, can you do local adjustments I mean or or are are the adjustments and I I think you just answered the question but this was a question can you do local adjustments or are they all global well they're not global because they're doing it pixel by pixel it's figuring it out pixel by pixel automatically uh, so I it's not going to be doing a, a correction like for instance here with my tint correction notice how the tint correction look at how it's changing the skin tone okay and not so much that shirt it's changing the skin tone much more so than the shirt okay so that's how it's analyzing pixel by pixel so it's seeing those differences in there 
and we when we do a correction within Lightroom or Photoshop, it's going to do the same correction on the whole image. Uh huh. So we didn't we didn't lose our white here as I make my changes. See, so it's it's doing a really nice correction without really destroying some of the other colors. Uh, if we want to do it more local, I would recommend doing it in Photoshop and doing it either as a smart object where we get a mask to play with and paint it in or we can apply it to a separate layer and paint in the corrections. And you did so a lot of showing that way. You did a lot of I, showing things back and forth, you know, before and after. What what key toggles before, you know, back and forth before and after? Uh, the before and after, like if I'm in the interface, all I do is click on the image itself and it'll show before and after, like it's doing now, or uh, a command or a control Z will turn it on and off. And if I'm in Photoshop, let's go over here to Photoshop. Okay. Oh, I don't have anything open. Okay. Let's go here. Go to this one, and we're going to change this to a eight bit, so it gets a smaller image. We'll go ahead and crop it. And we'll go ahead and open that. So when I go here to perfectly clear. Click OK. Let's just do Cambodia preset. Click OK. We are going to go in here and we can turn the eye off on this, the smart filter, and that just shows my before and after. So just clicking on that. Now if I was in standard layers, instead of the layer like in the smart object I usually do an option click and it'll turn all my previous layers off so you can do it several different ways but the eye is where it's at in Photoshop and in Lightroom we can just turn it uh, com command or controls Z and that'll undo and redo so. All right, so we've got just a few more uh, questions here and just a few more minutes. So do you okay. think the question here is, is sharpening in perfectly clear superior to Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw? Yeah, sharpening is sharpening. I always try and do sharpening once and last at the end of the workflow. So it depends upon what you're going to be outputting to. If you're just wanting a, an image uh, to, to display or to share or something like that, it's, it's great. And it's, it's good sharpening. Uh, I don't find that it's a whole lot different, but it's nice to have uh, some place where after I've done my corrections and my depth correction and stuff that it's applied at that particular time. If I apply it in my RAW and then apply it a second time in perfectly clear, then we're going to be over sharpened. So I'm not going to say that it's necessarily uh, uh, better or anything like that because it's, it's very similar in many respects on that sharpening. There's, there's other sharpening tools that uh, I will often use. But uh, if I'm just doing something that I'm going to be sharing with somebody, I will use the perfectly clear sharpening because it does have uh, those nice controls in there. Okay. Anything else, Brenda? Perfectly Clear is a plug-in for Photoshop and Lightroom, right? Right. It's a plug-in for both Photoshop and Lightroom. It, uh, it's not a freestanding thing. It's a plug-in for those two. No, we're doing a beta test on the freestanding. You can go on to our website and you can get 90 days free to beta test and give us feedback on our standalone. Okay. Now, the tablet and phone versions uh, are not included with the desktop versions. They're sold separately as apps, right? 
Yes, that's correct. Uh, the price is uh, two ninety nine. The regular price. Okay, uh, one purchase of Perfectly Clear is good for Windows and Mac. And what's the licensing on that? So if you have uh, just like Photoshop, it's for two computers. Two computers. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, and it doesn't matter if one's a Mac and one's a uh, one's a nope. PC. Right? Yeah, we're, we're cross platform. It's not a problem. All right, and I'm just uh, scrolling down through the last uh, few questions here. Um, uh, what is the name of the software that you use to calibrate the display in the printer? Well, the software comes with the Color Monkey Photo. Right. So, Color Monkey Photo is a device, and the software comes with the device, and that's uh, what you're going to be using to calibrate your uh, computer monitor and your printer. And if you have a projector, it will also calibrate your projector. All right. Well, Janice, uh, we are just uh, flat out of time here, and we're just about to the end of the questions. We certainly do appreciate your great demonstration here today on how to save time and uh, and have do our editing in a in a much more timely manner and giving us a view of perfectly clear today. So, thank you all for joining us. We'll have another session of this same webinar at 3 p.m. If you would uh, like to attend again. And you will also receive an email with an archive link to uh, the recorded version of the webinar to review later on. So thank you all for joining us for this webinar this afternoon. And we hope to see you at another x Right webinar very, very soon. Janice, thank you very much to Perfectly Clear. Thank you, Brenda. I appreciate it. We appreciate you co-sponsoring the webinar there at Athentech. Thanks a lot. Thank you.